Seeing as we're talking about sunglasses today, yep. you're going to put some on. Of course I fucking am. I'm going to bring my own personal pair. Ah! Also, don't play that clip from CSI because they'll demonetize this video. Let's go. <laughs> Clayton Moore is an actor near universally recognized for his tenure as the Old West gunslinger, the Lone Ranger. A role Moore enjoyed playing so much that he continued to play the character after his retirement from the role right up until the rights holder inexplicably decided to be a huge dick about it. So it was Clayton Moore playing the Lone Ranger? Originally. Yes, a role he became completely synonymous with after he first started playing the character in 1949. Like Before this, he'd been a, a reasonably successful actor, but the Lone Ranger role had catapulted him into superstardom. And he played the character for about 10 years, retiring officially, like, you know, from the role as the Lone Ranger in a film called The Lone Ranger and the Lost City of Gold, released in 1958. You said uh, he continued to play him after he retired? Yeah, so he retired in 1958, and this puts in perspective like, how much this guy loved this character. He continued to appear in costume as the Lone Ranger until 1999, the year that he died. 50 years, five decades playing the Lone fucking Ranger. And to really sell how much this guy fucking loved being the Lone Ranger, that's the last acting credit he ever had. Like the Lone Ranger basically killed his career because he was so tight because no one could see him as anyone but the Lone Ranger. And unlike other actors that's happened, I think Bella Lugosi's a famous one, because he was so good at playing Dracula, no one could see him as anyone but Dracula, or George Reeves, who plays Superman. Clayton Moore, on the other hand, fucking loved being the Lone Ranger and had no issues with the fact the character basically killed his career because he just enjoyed, like, you know, the reactions from people when they saw him in the street. Like, oh, mummy, mummy, it's the Lone Ranger. Like, fucking yeah, it's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> and he took to wearing the character's outfit basically everywhere he went. Seeing as he was such a big fan of playing the Lone Ranger, did he do anything else with that nope. or with his career or anything? No, nope. um, I believe that 1958 role as the, like, the Lone Ranger in the film, like The Lone Ranger in the Lost City of Gold, was his final ever official acting credit. Um, but he did continue to make obviously public appearances as the Lone Ranger for the next 50 fucking years. So he had an all right career and he made like, you know, a steady, decent living. And also, like, he just loved it because everywhere he went, people loved him yeah. and recognised him. And he became his like beloved icon of just American culture. What about the rights holder to the Lone Ranger character? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, obviously, I mentioned in the intro, they got kind of pissy, but not initially. I believe the rights holder is a guy called Jack Rather or Rather. I'm going to go for Rather because it sounds cooler. And like, for many years, he like, you know, allowed Clayton Moore to go out making appearances in costume as the Lone Ranger because he thought, what the fuck else is he going to do? Like, you know, the guy played him for years. He made me loads of money. I don't really give a shit. However, that all stopped, though, when Rather had the idea to reboot the Lone Ranger with a younger actor. Something I'm sure Hollywood will make work eventually. <laughs> How many times has Hollywood tried that now and it's failed every single fucking time? Say, so wasn't there a new Lone Ranger film? Yep, <laughs> with, with, with Johnny Depp in it. Yeah. <laughs> just some, I think it's Army Hammer and Johnny Depp, which yeah. failed. Because you know what? Um, just going to put this out there for like, you know, Hollywood executive people. Um, getting Johnny Depp and putting him in white face paint does not a good movie make. Please stop doing that. It's not good. He's not that good an actor. Just hire anybody else. Yes. No, no, yes, no, yes, no, we are not. Yes, no, yes. Shut up! Something I should point out to people at home is we're not talking about, like, you know, the 2000s era Johnny Depp reboot, but one that happened in 1979. And uh, Ratha was apparently, like, all kinds of concerned that if they announced there's going to be, like, you know, a reboot of The Lone Ranger, this doddering old man was still out there saying, I'm The Lone Ranger, it might confuse audiences and make them think that he was going to be playing The Lone Ranger in the reboot. So what he did is he took Mr. Clayton Moore, an adorable old man, beloved by all of America, to court to sue him for trying to earn an honest living as the character he played for 10 years. And as you can imagine, this didn't go well because everybody inexplicably decided to side with Moore, which didn't stop, like, you know, Rafa from taking him to court and winning and getting an injunction against Moore, which stopped him from ever appearing in public again in the full Lone Ranger costume. Before we go and talk about the sunglasses, can we just address the fact that Jack Rather almost happened upon the idea of John Wick four decades early? Because he was like worried 
terrified that if he announced this reboot and, you know, Clayton Moore was still out there pretending to be the Lone Ranger, that people think, oh no, this 55-year-old man is going to be playing this, like, you know, um, gunslinging badass and no one's going to watch that movie. That movie's John Wick. That movie is Taken. That movie is Kingsman. That's every good action movie from, like, the last 15 years. <laughs> We could have had it like four days. We could have had that genre of bringing back an old actor and just turning him into a fucking badass four decades earlier. We could have been having a John Wick every three or four years. And this guy didn't think about it, man. That is one of my favourite trends in Hollywood. Just when Liam Neeson was in Taken, there was like an entire slew of movies where old actors from the 80s thought, I can be an action star now. <laughs> I just want to ask now, Nisha, what was your favourite failed attempt from an actor to try and cash in on the Taken train? Because mine has to be John Travolta and the filthy I Am Wrath. And it worked with Liam Neeson, because Liam Neeson is a terrifyingly large man. I think he's like six foot three, six foot four, or some shit like that. And he's just got this like quietly intimidating aura that he just exudes at all times. John Travolta is just this big fucking porky fat sack of shit. Who the hell are you? I... Getting back to the Lone Ranger, despite overwhelmingly negative press, like, Ratha did win the lawsuit and Clayton Moore was told, you can't be the Lone Ranger anymore. So do you know what he did? He went, fuck you. And he went out and he bought a giant pair of fucking sunglasses that happened to look exactly like the Lone Ranger's domino mask and went out wearing the Lone Ranger costume and those. Because technically, that was legally distinct enough from the Lone Ranger costume to not get sued. Well, that's a pretty ingenious idea of him to get around that. It is, and what made it even better though is the press tour he went on after the fact where, because obviously he couldn't say, I'm the Lone Ranger. What they say is, oh no, here's the actor best known for playing the Lone Ranger, and he'd come out in the costume. <laughs> and this is fucking true. Sometimes he didn't have time to speak because people would cheer so loudly and for so long that the shows he was appearing on would run out of time before he could do anything. So it would just be five solid minutes of cheering for this old man in these sunglasses. And then, is it, that's not good enough, he then got a endorsement deal for sunglasses. <laughs> So they give him free sunglasses forever. It's like, oh, that's so good. Good on him. It's so fucking good. And as you probably guessed by now, given that they rebooted the Lone Ranger again in the 2000s, that 1979 reboot fucking died on its ass. And eventually, Ratha just went, fuck it. I can't be arsed dealing with this negative press. And he let Clayton once again don the domino mask and continue being the Lone Ranger. But I can't, and he did, but I kind of wish he kept the sunglass look because that, just the idea of literal fuck you sunglasses. And as I mentioned, like he died in 1999, um, quite unexpectedly because he was still making public appearances like basically up until he died, right? And he was rightly remembered in every obituary written about him as the Lone fucking Ranger. <laughs> as he should, as he should. So since it's the theme of today, let's talk about some badass sunglasses worn by fictional characters because I've got mine on and these are like just cheap knockoff ones from Primark, but I think they are based on the Ray-Bans. So we have to like, you know, first, just like, you know, pay homage to the god of Ray-Bans, Mr. Tom Cruise. <laughs> because up until that point, Ray-Bans were like, it's a dying brand that no one really gave a shit about. After, like, you know, Top Gun, everybody needed a pair of Ray-Bans. Everyone needed those aviator sunglasses, man. And I'm just going to what are your favourite, like, sunglass types? I'm a big fan of the Wayfarers, personally. One that I've just thought of, which is not a favourite, but I remember it being a craze, like, probably ten years ago. Okay. I think... I, I can't remember who started it. I, I feel like it was, like, Kanye West. Oh, no, the party shades. Yeah, the, the ones that the, just, like, the, lines... The, oh, man, they were so dope. You can't Things really though. see through them. Did you have a pair of those? I think every student did, and every like, and you wore them too, like um, UV raves. I used to love those parties. Now, phone parties, I miss them. I miss the phone parties, but too many people have expensive phones on them now where phone parties can't be a thing. So I'm still waiting for phones to become like so ubiquitously waterproof, pushing people into swimming pool becomes funny again. But anyway, let's move on. Right, so shade sunglasses, like, oh God, they were terrible. It's like, oh man, I think I'm a big fan though of the uh, the Morpheus glasses, the ones that like pinch to your nose, yeah. the little round ones that no one can pull off unless you are Asian or black. 
Because I'm sorry, there is no white guy in the world that can pull that fucking look <laughs> off. Like, you have to either be just like the baldest, blackest martial artist man in the world, or just an ancient Chinese dude who knows like a mysterious form of dragon kung fu. Because if I was wearing those sunglasses throughout this video, everyone watching would rightly be calling me a fucking douchebag. Instead, I just look like I'm going, I'm from the 80s or something. I'm very 80s today. Yeah, with the, with the white t shirt and the denim jacket. Wait, what, are you, what are you doing, mate? There we go. Oh, yeah. Get the full 80s going on. You look like you belong in Greece. <laughs> oh, man. Do you know what I don't miss and I hope never comes back? Wrap around sunglasses. Do you remember then the ones that wrap around your face completely and have like the weird yeah. pearlescent things that make it like an insect? Yeah, I hate them. They look so stupid. Like the ones that you see now, like guys who are bald and yell at their wife in public wear it on the back of their heads. Those ones. Yeah. <laughs> the ones you see dads on holiday wear and they've got like the little beer gut just barely being covered by a Manchester United shirt from the 90s. The ones that I really like but I can't pull off are the Tony Stark ones. Mm -hmm. I think they're like Tom Ford or something, the ones he wears. Like I can only pull off like Stuff like this, and I don't think I pull this off. I just have these because you know what? They protect my eyes from the sun. It's very bright outside today. And I'm taking them off because they're starting to steam up. Look, you know. But I wear actual glasses, and <laughs> I got some new ones recently, and they were slightly rounder than the ones I had before. And I don't think they suit me. No. I think I'm square glasses. I can't pull glasses off. I'm the same way where I can't pull glasses off, and I'm glad that I don't need them because my dad wears them. And I just look at him, and they put like 30 years on him. Like, as soon as he puts them on, it's like, Dad, do you need to go? Do I need to take you home? Because it's five o'clock, you need to go home, Dad. So he refuses to wear them and he pretends that he doesn't need them. And this is a true fucking story. Like, he went for an eye test once and he was so pissed off that he didn't want to wear something like that. What he did, he got his phone, zoomed in on the thing through the window, memorized all the things, and then just said that out loud oh and got a perfect God. score. <laughs> fucking hustler. Oh, no. Nice one. And he did that to keep his bus driver's license. So yeah, that's that's probably a crime. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. Arrest my dad. Actually, don't because he'll be pissed off. <laughs> he does he does good work. <laughs> he wears them now. That was a couple of years ago when he was still embarrassed about it. But I remember him telling me that story, He's like zooming in on his phone. Like, oh my dad, he's like the ultimate hustler. It's like he says every year for Valentine's Day, what he does is he goes to um, the shop, he gets the card, we've got the Hallmark card with the poem in it, yeah. and copies it into a blank card and writes his name on it. It's like, fucking... Such a don. I hope <laughs> I have that level of swagger when I'm older. But you know what? Oh, wait, I've got another pair of sunglasses. You know what? Let's try these ones. These are my mates. No. 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 <laughs> End the video.